Hello and welcome back to my studio. I'm creating an autumn leaf using coloured pencils and an airbrush background. Here's my airbrush supplies. I use acrylic paint transferred to little clear bottles and I use distilled water to thin the paints and the medium I like to use is by Golden. This provides the right viscosity to flow through the airbrush and when I'm finished I add a few drops of cleaner to the airbrush. I tape my paper to a masonite board on my easel and once a mask is applied to the paper I'm ready to begin airbrushing. A card above highlights a video to watch on exactly how to create your own mask and this method of cutting out and adhering a mask works perfectly to isolate the subject and create a clean edge. This is a gravity feed airbrush. Once I've poured a little paint in the top, I pull back the trigger. I use scrap paper to test the colour first before committing. To change the shade slightly, I just drop in more colour. I mix it right in the cup with an old brush. I recommend using clear bottles to mix as you go because you can clearly see the colours while you're working. It's faster in the long run and you'll learn a lot about colour mixing just by doing. I look at my reference, pour colour, add a few more drops of another colour and keep adjusting the shades. When I want to change to a different colour, I rinse the previous colour with some water and my brush, wipe it out with a cloth or paper towel and just add new colour. It's quick and easy. I do lay down a lot of old towels as acrylic doesn't come off anything if you spill, so cover your workspace accordingly. Stencils help to achieve an out of focus effect and I like the circle and hexagonal shapes. To isolate the openings that you don't need, just cover them with some masking tape. With an airbrush, especially these backgrounds, there aren't really any mistakes. If you don't like the colour, you can just spray a different colour right on top and acrylic dries really fast. When satisfied with the result and everything is perfectly dry, you're ready to peel away the mask to reveal the paper underneath. The paper is Strathmore Bristol Smooth 300 series drawing paper. The surface is untouched and ready for the coloured pencil application. I like to use a colour chart when I'm making my colour choices. I'm using wax based coloured pencils today and I use a manual sharpener. I'm beginning by looking at my reference and placing in the leaf veins and then applying a base layer of coloured pencils with light colours. This is just the beginning but it's an important step because with coloured pencils it's all about the layering. Now the first layer is going to look grainy and underdeveloped but don't be concerned because at this stage you're only placing down a single layer of pigment. All of the depth and most of the detail will happen much later so it's important to persevere and I'm going to show you a shortcut in a minute that will make coloured pencil work go much faster and be so much more enjoyable. But for now, lay your colours down in light but also even layers and that means grazing the paper, I mean barely touching the paper. And this way you don't fill the available tooth of the paper for your subsequent layers. Well, the best way to achieve light pressure is to follow these three tips. So tip number one, make sure you have the correct hand placement. Notice where my hand is placed along the shaft of the pencil. Ideally, any time you're laying down colour, your hand should be held way back from the tip and only placed towards the tip of the pencil when you're creating lines or details, basically when you want more control. 
And tip number two to achieve light layers is to lay the pencil more on its side rather than upright. And tip number three to achieve light layers, try applying circular or oval motions. It's best to avoid back and forth motions to prevent any stop and start lines. When you have enough pigment applied to your first layer, you're ready to apply solvent. I'm using turpenoid for my solvent or odorless mineral spirit and I like to pour a small amount from the large bottle into a smaller jar with a tightly fitted lid. Use it in a well ventilated area. I use an old small brush and a piece of paper towel. Dip an old brush you won't want to use again into the solvent and dab excess liquid off on a paper towel. A little goes a very long way. All you need is a brush that is damp with solvent, not wet, but damp. As you brush it onto your coloured pencil layer, you'll notice it starts smoothing everything out. Solvent also increases the saturation, saturation so all that graininess that you were worried about will be gone. All you needed was a decent amount of pigment on the surface of the paper first to allow the pigment to dissolve the pencil binder. I love using solvent because it creates a lovely painterly look that transforms drawings into paintings. The difference is really noticeable. My best tips are to keep the brush moving until it's almost dry before you re-dip. Avoid using large amounts, which is why I have a sea sponge inside my jar, but that's not really necessary. So I really meant it when I said that a little goes a long way. This angle shows you better the transformation occurring, so I'll speed things up a little bit and let you watch the magic happen. And to give you a better idea, here is a picture of before the solvent was applied and here is a picture after. Now, once the solvent has dried completely, you can apply another layer of coloured pencil on top. But you have to make sure that the solvent dries completely. So now you want to sharpen your pencils to a fine point for this layer because we're going to be adding lots of detail. You can now knock back some of the intensity of those vibrant colours and add the more autumnal shades of rich reds and browns and begin to add lots of those details. And notice that I'm using a light pressure again, always using a light pressure with coloured pencils and going in a circular motion. And you can start to add some other different colours. You can add some dark raspberry, some chocolate, but you want to leave some of the vibrancy in the leaf as that is what makes autumn so special. And just look at your reference and notice all the leaf markings, the little bruised edges, the little spots and other leaf characteristics. All these details help to create realism. Because of using an airbrush background as well as the solvent, the whole process was completed in just a few hours. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please help my channel by subscribing and hitting the notification bell. It really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.